Good evening all. Tonight I will be sharing 7 true psych ward stories from people who lived there. Also I posted on my community tab which a lot of you don't see, but I plan on doing a monthly giveaway of either one of my hoodies from my store or a t-shirt once I gain another few Patreons. Let me know which you would prefer. Also for those of you who do not know what the Patreon is, it's a site I upload exclusive content to that I don't post here or I either post videos early there. Links in the description. Anyway, let's begin. Number 1 Well, this one night I remember falling asleep rather fast and waking up in the middle of the night to someone singing. It started off faintly then got louder as the person neared my room. I then realised someone was pacing the hall singing. It got much creepier. While he was singing, he was running his nails down the walls as he paced back and forth and continued singing. What made it even worse, he was singing about death and demons which totally was freaking me out. I remember my exact thoughts were, shit, I'm going to die. It was like a scene from a horror movie, it went on for a good 20 minutes and I couldn't figure out why the hell the nurses weren't doing their checks and why this kid was still pacing without being found. I was starting to get more and more nervous by the second when all of a sudden I hear from across the room one of the girls with extreme anger management problems start yelling for this kid to shut up. I was relieved that I wasn't the only one hearing this and a second later I hear a loud bang like the door across the hall had flung open and then a thud. The girl had somehow flung open her locked door and tackled the kid to the ground. She was angry he was disrupting her sleep and I couldn't have been more thrilled. After a couple of seconds of listening to them wrestle around on the floor, I finally heard the nurses come running to break it up. Supposedly they had both gone to the kitchen to get coffee or something. I'm still not completely sure where they were during all of it. I suppose the story was on more of the funnier side but at the time it really freaked me out. Number 2 As I was reading, I saw a nurse escorting a boy my age, um, we shall call him John. We made brief eye contact and I went back to reading. He later approached me and introduced himself. We got talking and things seemed normal until he said he saw me when I was admitted the previous night. He then proceeded to tell me that he thought I was very hot and had to masturbate to the thought of me right afterwards. I would do the same later. I was a bit freaked out, brushed it off with a nervous laugh and changed subjects. We continued talking and suddenly he says, you know, those hospital pyjamas look really fucking sexy on you. I can totally see myself tearing those off you. Again, cue nervous laughter. I then went into my room and took a nap. Suddenly this other male patient came in. I was terrified. This patient had been staring through my room window repeatedly, would say hi and run away, and had plucked my hair out during breakfast. He shuffled in and hands me something, says bye and runs out. I looked down and saw that he had given me my bra back and neatly folded. At this point I had enough and told the nurses what happened. They laughed and said, oh, he likes the young ones. During lunch, I got repeatedly harassed by the bra thief, to the point where he was not allowed near me, and John would sit across from me licking the utensils while staring at me. In the end, before John was sent to another hospital, he cornered me and told me that I was making him so horny. He proceeded to pull his pants down and show me his boner. Number 3 The second time I was admitted to a psych ward, I had a roommate. She was a lovely woman, kind and smart. When she was stable, that is. However, most of the time I knew her, she was not. She had bipolar disorder, complicated by periods of schizophrenic manic phases. She saw butterflies on the walls in the middle of the night. She ran naked from room to room. She called me horrible names, told me terrible stories from her youth. Rooming with her was a nightmare. 
when I complained that I wasn't able to sleep and was a little scared, an orderly filled me in on the details. The middle-aged woman I was sharing a room with was a beloved Spanish teacher at a local high school. She had taught there many years and every year, about two weeks after school ended, she would have an episode exactly like this one she was currently having and recover in a few weeks. Up until now, she had never hurt anyone, so I should be fine. And I was left in that room. Number 4 I was held involuntarily for 72 hours once, for a suicide attempt. In this particular ward, you weren't allowed to have any electronic devices, cell phones and music players, etc. Except this one girl in my room always had headphones on and was constantly rocking out to nothing. There's more. I was so miserable I pretty much slept and stayed in bed the whole time, skipping therapy sessions and only got up when they brought my pills. Ended up passing time just listening to my roommates. I overheard the same girl talking about her fiancé. She talked about how he was a famous pop star in Taiwan, how he went to Berkeley College of Music, did contact lens and McDonald's commercials and proposed to her over YouTube. The other patient she was talking to ate it up. However, also being from Taiwan, I quickly realised she was describing Wang Li Hong and that the girl was indeed batshit insane. She was also ecstatic that she was being released that day, after having been in the ward for two weeks. 35 year old male here. Back in 2001 I was arrested for disorderly conduct and the cops thought I was suicidal. So they sent me to a psych ward for a month. Let me tell you, these places are creepy, especially when you know you are fine. There was one time where one of the local patients called Tom was acting out of rage, like he usually would. This time though, he seemed a little abnormal. Apparently, they had mixed up his medication with someone else's. He was trying to tell them this. They weren't having it and kept telling him to sit down. Well, about 20 minutes later, while Tom was doing a crossword puzzle, he suddenly flips the entire table over and starts punching every staff member inside with incredible force, all while reciting the fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme song. Two of the nurses had pretty bad welts on their face, one with a busted lip. Security came and took him away a few minutes later, and I never saw Tom again for the last week I was there. Number 6 I was in one once for about two weeks after threatening, not attempting, suicide. There was a girl, she was in her early twenties, and I was curious as to why she was in the children's floor. Apparently the girl was seriously messed up in the head and had been there since she was ten. Her parents were either rich or had great insurance because she was there 24-7 for over ten years. She would flip out at night and any new arrivals, like she was screaming up and down the halls the night I arrived and then was fine until a few days later when a new girl arrived. Anyway, this girl was huge, maybe 5'10", at least 200 pounds. The floor was getting ready for visitation, the first one since I had been there, and all of a sudden, she came charging out of her room, down the hall to the common room and started flipping tables tore the TV off the wall, punched two orderlies, and broke a few other things until one of the nurses, sweet tiny older woman, chased her down and got her in the ass with a triple dose of Thorzine. She tried to fight it and it was like a slow motion tiger, eventually they called up three burly security guards who basically dragged her to the quiet room. About an hour later, we watched them drag her back to her room and strap her down to the bed. She slept for almost two days. Number 7 When I was admitted to a psych ward for a few weeks, something that really bothered me was one day one of the female patients that was there with me at the time told me she found writings under her bed. They were just old small wooden bed frames with hard mattresses that would make all kinds of noises when you rolled over, but I still wondered what exactly she was doing laying under her bed to find these writings. 
when she first told me I thought it was a joke. But sure enough, one day during group we managed to sneak away and she showed me and exactly where she said they were, there were stories. After that we had everyone check under their own beds and there were more under every single bed. I don't remember what all was specifically written under the beds but there were stories of patients who had stayed here before or ways they were planning on killing themselves or who the good and bad nurses were. Nonetheless it kind of creeped me out further. Thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed these kind of stories then please be sure to like and comment on the video and it's the only indication to me that you did when looking for future videos to make. Also I want to thank you all for helping me reach over 1.5 thousand subscribers or creepy family members. <laughs> Hopefully 2019 brings us double that and we continue to expand. However I want to thank you all for listening and I hope to see you all in the next one. Thank you.